So when we talk about essential fatty acids, primarily we're talking about two different kinds. We have omega-6 and omega-3. I want to focus on both of them today because we have a big problem. The ratios at which people are consuming the omega-6 to omega-3 are way, 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 way off. On an average American, they're at 20 to 1 to sometimes 70 to 1 or more. And this introduction of the seed oils are a relatively new thing for humans. And I know people call them vegetable oils, but there's no vegetables in these oils. They're, they're seed oils. So this whole seed oil thing started in 1866 with cotton seed oil. I mean, before this, we used cotton seed oil in lamps as a fuel. We used it as a lubricant in machinery. And then someone had a great idea to put it in the food supply and turn it into edible oil. In fact, all the information I'm sharing with you is out of this book right here, The Ancestral Diet Revolution by Dr. Chris Kenobi, MD. An incredible textbook on everything you'd ever want to know uh, about the seed oils and the uh, effects that it can create for our health. But I want to read you um, a quote on page 30. On the topic of cottonseed oil use, an issue of popular science from the turn of the 20th century era summed up cottonseed and cottonseed oil with a single phrase. What was garbage in 1860 was fertilizer in 1870, cattle feed in 1880, and table food in 1890. There's so many things we have in our environments that are considered waste that we somehow turn it into food. I mean, even toxic sewage sludge is uh, recycled into biosolids and used as fertilizer. You have restaurant grease is recycled and put in the food supply. But let me not divert from this topic. Let's get back to this uh, omega-6, omega-3 fatty acid uh, ratio. We need both of these essential fatty acids, but we definitely don't need it in the imbalanced amounts not to mention the source of the seed oils, right? You're talking about using petroleum-derived hexane, which is a solvent uh, in this process, chemical alkalization, bleaching, deodorizing, and you're heating these very unstable oils many different times. And what's really wild about this is roughly about a fourth to a third of all your calories. It's not just in cooking oil, it's in a lot of different things. We already have a problem with inflammation. The number one selling drug on the planet is an anti-inflammatory. And when your fat cell becomes inflamed, that can produce insulin resistance. And then also at the heart of this inflammation, we have a lot of associated mitochondrial dysfunction. The majority of illnesses and disease are in mitochondrial origin. Now I'll just show you two graphs right here. The top graph is the omega-6 fatty acids. Okay. The bottom graph is the omega-3 fatty acids. As you can see, the trend for omega-3 is not nearly as high as omega-6. I want to show you this graph right here. If you look at heart disease going up and look at saturated fat right in the center there, that is not spiking parallel with seed oils. So in other words, we've replaced our saturated fats with seed oils with this false idea that the saturated fats are the problem and the unsaturated fats are the solution. Unsaturated fats do have the capacity to lower cholesterol, but they're not heart protective. There's a lot of data that indicates that these highly processed industrial seed oils create a lot of damage at the cellular level. You can see total um, meat, okay? And you can also see uh, over time, red meat is not really uh, a big spike, but poultry is interesting. So the big spike in meat is really chicken, which is very high in omega-6 fatty acids. If you're doing grass-fed meats, it's going to be very low in this omega-6 fatty acid. In this graph right here, we have cardiovascular deaths correlate more with vegetable oils than it does with sugar. Seed oils are in so many different foods, and it's definitely part of pretty much every single ultra-processed food, aka junk foods. You know, a lot of times people think that um, ultra processed foods are just, you know, saturated fats. Well, the really the only saturated fats in these ultra processed foods is palm oil in very small amounts. I mean, really no one's talking about the seed oils in these ultra processed foods, the unsaturated fatty acids, which are very unstable. 
That's enough for omega-6 fatty acids. Now, what about omega-3 fatty acids? Where do we get that? We get it from fish, cod liver oil. Cod liver has probably the most omega-3 fatty acids, sardines, and uh, wild-caught uh, shellfish. But the animals that consume these grains, like pigs and chickens, and even the grain-fed beef are much higher in omega-6 fatty acids. So this is one reason why a lot of people are turning to grass-fed, grass-finished beef, okay? Because it's gonna to contribute to the omega-3 fatty acids. People are doing more and more fish, which is also gonna contribute. Now, when we have this omega-6 fatty acid and omega-3 fatty acid, they go through a series of pathways to be able to turn into certain compounds that benefit our bodies. And the enzymes that allow this biochemical conversions are shared by both the omega-6 and omega-3. In other words, both of these oils compete with each other. And so if there's any problem in this biochemical pathway, because maybe we are missing cofactors, then you're going to get dysfunctional fats. You're not going to get the benefit of the omega-3, and we're not going to be able to use some of these oils. Now, don't get me wrong, we do need omega-6 as well, but we don't need it in such high quantities. And we also need it from a much higher quality source. So the cofactors that allow this to happen include like magnesium, B2, B3, B6, vitamin C, and, and this is interesting, insulin. Now, you have to realize that the great majority of people are insulin resistant, which means they're deficient in insulin. So therefore, they're not gonna have the cofactor to allow this to happen. So I really think, based on that data, that if you're doing a lot of seed oils and you're insulin resistant, there's gonna be a lot more compounded damage versus if you were to correct insulin resistance through a diet that's low in carb and doing intermittent fasting for a period of time, you're gonna be able to utilize more of the benefits of these essential fatty acids and not have dysfunctional problems with them. Primarily, we have like EPA and DHA. EPA is more for inflammation. DHA is really important in cognitive function, attention, focus, learning, and that's going to come from fatty fish and fish oil. Now, there's also a precursor um, that turns into EPA that's called ALA. Sometimes you'll see in uh, various articles that, um, you know, consume more flax and chia seed and walnuts if you want to get more omega-3 fatty acids, but they're not talking about EPA. They're talking about the precursor. There's a really um, important test uh, that measures your omega-6 to your omega-3 fatty acid ratio. And so that way you can actually know if you're okay or not. It'll tell you based on a simple um, blood spot test where you just take a drop of blood, put it on this little card, send it in. It'll give you more information uh, into what's happening internally in your body. And I highly recommend that test uh, done over time to be able to correct these ratios if they're off. So in summary, start to consume wild-caught fish on a regular basis, like salmon and sardines, things like that. And at the same time, start limiting the amount of omega-6 fatty acids because never in history have we consumed the quantities and the out-of-balance ratios of omega-6 to omega-3. And I'm going to put a link down below for uh, Dr. Kenobi's book, as well as a link if you wanted to get that test um, to evaluate. And Instead of me taking an affiliate commission, I'm going to share that commission with you as a discount so you pay the least amount possible. So I'll put that link down below. You can get that test and see where you're at. So thanks for watching. And if you have not seen my video on cod liver oil, uh, that's a good one to watch too. I put it up right here.